Hello friends, Christian here with Brick Life Crisis. This channel is recommended for adult and teen fans of LEGO. If you are younger than the age of 13, you're welcome to watch, but first, get your parents' permission. Hello friends, Christian here with Brick Life Crisis again. Today we're taking a look at the latest microfighter from LEGO Star Wars. This is set number 75321, the Razorcrest microfighter. This set is recommended for ages 6 and up and consists of 98 pieces, including one minifigure. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and open it up, build it up, and see what we think. Actually, before we open this up, I want to take a quick look at the box. Uh, it's not something I usually do. Packaging is uh, not something I generally talk about on this channel, but... Um, I understand what they've done here. This is the where Grogu was kidnapped um, back there in the back. Sorry, spoilers, but whatever. Um, but the background just doesn't look all that great to me. I, I don't know. The coloring is kind of bland. And then this orange stripe going past. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of it. And the box feels thin and, uh, I don't know, cheaply made. It almost feels like something you would get in a dollar store set or something. Anyway. Um, the artwork on the back is okay, shows off the new uh, stud shooter, um, but again, it just doesn't really sing to me. Um, so, for what that's worth, um, the box is unimpressive, but this isn't about the box, it's about what's inside. This one is one of the punch tabs, so if we push that guy in, uh, it doesn't do much. <laughs> Hang on. There we go. So, yeah, the... The thickness, or the thinness rather, of this cardboard uh, is really evident, and that's why it was more difficult to punch through that, because it's almost just paper stock. It's really, really cheap. Um, again, that's not really the important part. What's important is what's inside, so let's go ahead and build it up. All right, we've got two small bags of parts and an instruction manual. The instruction manual is typical. Um, Nothing downgraded here. It's just normal Lego instruction paper stock. So uh, let's get building. All right. For those of you that haven't seen it yet, this is the new stud shooter. Uh, cosmetically, it's a little bit different. Um, and functionally, it's a little bit different. You load the stud sideways like so. And the plunger is a little bit different design too. And you just push down on that. And it will shoot across the room just like before. Um, but uh, it's a less rounded, and therefore uh, it can probably be blended into builds uh, a little bit less conspicuously. So that's a, a good thing. So there you go. All right, here is the small batch of extra pieces, uh, including one of the new trigger pieces for the uh, new stud shooters, uh, and a, a cheese slope for the window, and an extra piece of ammunition with that red stud there. All right, here it is, the Razor Crest with Din Djarin. Let's go ahead and take a look at Din first. Um, this is Mando, of course. Um, this is the same figure we've gotten before. Nicely done with the Beskar armor. Uh, this time he has a little sidearm rather than that uh, iconic rifle that he has. Um, he has the jetpack, which, which looks very good in the uh, kind of gunmetal gray. And uh, his helmet is nicely done. Uh, of course, this guy just has a black helmet, which some people won't like, but I actually appreciate. Um, even though it's not Din Djarin's face, uh, I like it because you don't see uh, any flesh tone underneath. Uh, and uh, it's always nice to have those black heads, I think, um, to uh, replace some old Stormtrooper heads and stuff like that. So you don't have that uh, flesh tone peeking out from underneath. But um, a nicely done figure and... As far as I can tell, I think this is the least expensive way to get a Mando figure. And this is the main event. This is the Razor Crest uh, in the micro-scaled version. Uh, it has the nice big engines on the side like you'd expect. Uh, a little detail that is kind of nice that you might not expect is that the uh, cargo ramp, if I can get my fingers in there, uh, is movable so it can come down and you can pretend to load in cargo. Uh, you can't actually put anything in there, but uh, it's a nice little detail. Uh, the shaping on the back is okay. Um, 
the view from the top is terrible, uh, but that's because it's a micro fighter and you're supposed to put a figure in there. But it just doesn't look like the Razor Crest, in my opinion. Uh, they tried to round it off at the front, um, but a lot of that is blocked with these stud shooters, which uh, you could conceivably leave off and just replace with a couple of um, plates instead, which would be a better look. Uh, but even so, um, it just looks weird to me. Uh, I guess all of the micro fighters are this way. The Millennium Falcon, you know, you've got the Han Solo or Chewbacca sticking up and everything else. It just This one in particular bothers me more than the other ones do. Um, the figure fits in there fine, and they've done that because uh, they've given a little bit of extra space in the back to make up for the jetpack. Um, but the Mando figure fits in there okay, and I think it looks much better with the figure in place. Um, but even so, I don't know, it looks like a, a kid's ride at Disneyland or something. just doesn't evoke the... Uh, the source material to me. It just doesn't have the same shaping and stuff, but um, still for 10 bucks, not a bad way to get a Din Djarin. And some of these parts are good for mocks and that sort of thing, but this particular build just doesn't quite do it for me. Anyway, uh, that's about it for this one. This has been Christian with Brick Life Crisis, taking a look at the latest uh, micro fighter from Lego Star Wars. This is uh, Din Djarin's The Razor Crest, uh, set number 75321. And uh, yeah, that's about it for now. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, may the force be with you. Take care. Bye for now.